Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this optical illusion. You might be wondering how is this piece an optical illusion? Try pausing the video and see what happens. The cube disappears, right? When you pause the video. I got inspired to create this piece after watching a video by Chris Long that demonstrates a persistence of vision effect. And I'll link his video down below so you can see how it is being implemented there. And the comment section there is also quite interesting to read. Let's start by creating a grid of pixels with random black and white colors. I'm going to declare a few variables. Columns, rows, and size. Let's set the size to how about 50. And then I'm going to also declare an array called grid. Inside a setup function, first I'm going to calculate columns by dividing width by size and rows by dividing height by size. Now let's create a 2D array grid that stores a value either 0 or 1. So first I'm going to use a nested for loop that goes from i equals to 0, i less than columns, i plus plus, and then for let j equals to 0, j less than rows, and then j plus plus. Inside this outer loop, we want to create a 2D array, and we can do that by first populating this 1D array with empty 1D arrays inside. So now we have a 2D arrays. And then inside here, we want to provide a value that we want to store. And the value that we want to store in this grid 2D array is either 0 or 1. And to get that, we can use a random function. So I'm going to put 0 here for now because I want to show you how we're going to get random values either 0 or 1. First, we're going to use a random function. And a random function can take in an argument in multiple ways. And one of the ways is if we were to provide this one value, let's say 10. And if I print that, you can see values here. 2.38, 7.86, 9.28. It's going to return a value between 0 and 10, but not including 10. So 0 to 9.99999. If we want to only get an integer, what we can do is that we can use a function called floor and provide this random function here inside the floor function, and it will return an integer rounded down from the decimal values that you saw initially. So with this argument, random of 10, you'll get the values between 0 and 9, right? But we only want a value between 0 and 1. So what we need is that it's instead of random of 10, we want random of 2. And so now you get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we just get random values between 0 and 1. So we want to use floor of random of 2. And that's exactly what we need to put in here to populate this 2D array called grid. So floor of random of 2. Okay, I'm going to delete this. And then now inside the draw function, I'm going to first draw out a grid of columns and rows. And I'm also going to use a nested for loop that loops through the same thing, right? So i equals to 0, i less than calls, i plus plus, 4, let j equals 0, j less than rows, and then j plus plus. First, I'm going to draw a square. And I can use a function called rect. The first two arguments that we need to provide first are i times size, and then j times size. And then the width and the height will be the same right, for a square, so we can do size and size. Perfect. All right, and then now we want to fill in the colors that we have inside this grid. So first, we're going to use a function called fill. But we're going to fill what? So actually, we need to use a conditional statement, right? So we want to say, if grid of i and j, so we want to pull the values inside the grid to the array is equals to 0, then we want to fill the square with a color, how about white, else then we fill it with black. All right, and then now how about we also do no stroke? Perfect. 
Now step one is done. We have a grid of random black and white colors. Next, what we want to do is that we want to create an image that is overlaying on top of this grid that has a color that is opposite to the color inside the grid. I'm going to do it in a very simple way. First, I want to declare two variables, x and y, and provide a value of the index of the square at which I have my mouse on top. So let x equals to mouse x divided by size, and this division will return a decimal point. So I also want to use a function floor to turn it into an integer. And same thing for y, it will be floor of mouse y divided by size. Actually, why don't we just print x and y so that you can see what is happening. So if I click run, 0, 0, this one is 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. So it just tracks my mouse position and then returns the index, the x and y index of the square that the mouse is on top. Perfect. Now, what I want to do is I want to use these x and y values and I want to draw a rectangle at x times size, y times size, and then size and size. So same thing as this, right? But the color that I want to fill, I want to write a conditional statement that says if grid of x and y equals to 1. If it's 1, then the color is, let's just do 0 first. If it's 0, then the color is white, right? So we actually want to fill it with the opposite color. And then else, fill it with the color white. All right, let's try that. All right, so now wherever my mouse is, then that pixel changes the colors. I'm going to put this mouse animation thing inside a class because eventually what I want to do is that we want to create an object that is animating and then we'll be able to see that cool effect. First, you need to click this arrow here, click the plus sign and then click create file. Let's call this class, how about block.js? And then before we start writing a class, let's go to index.html file, come to this line of code here, copy and paste. And then you want to also change the name of this to the name of the new file that you just created. In my case, it's block.js, and this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into your program. All right, so now we're ready to write a class. So this class is going to be called block, and then I'm going to start by writing the constructor function, and how about display? And then inside the constructor function, I'm going to declare this dot x to be equals to mouse x and then this dot y to be equals to mouse y but because the mouse x and mouse y we have to move which means that it has to be updated all the time right we also need to put this dot x and this dot y here in display because we want to update it all the time constructor function only is called once when the object is created all right and then now what do we want to do let's go back to sketch.js basically we just need to do this set of code here. We want to also provide another argument here inside the display function, display method, grid, because we want to tell it which grid to pull the colors from. All right, and then we need to fix x here to be this.x and then this to be this.y. Same here. All right. Let's try that. All right, so let's go back to sketch.js. And then now, first, how about we create a new object called b. And b is a new object of the class block. And then now, inside draw function, we just need to call the display method. And we need to provide the grid here, right, as an argument. Let's click run. All right, and what does it say? Cannot read properties of undefined. And that is because, that is because why? Let's just try to print this.x and this.y.
Oh, I did a big mistake. It's not mouse x and mouse y, right? It is mouse divided by size, and then we need the word, the function floor as well. All right, and then now it is working as expected. Okay, but now if we were to first reduce the size to five, I'm also going to delete this print function. Let's click run. And then now you can barely see my mouse action. So what I want to do is that instead of just doing just the square of where my mouse is, I want to create like a section of where my mouse is. So first inside this constructor function, how about we declare one more variables called, how about I call it margin? Let's set it to 10. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to create a nested for loop, right? And this nested for loop is gonna go from let i equals to negative margin to i less than positive margin. So this has to be this dot margin and then i plus plus same thing for the j side so j equals to negative this dot margin j less than this dot margin j plus plus so basically what i'm trying to do is that instead of just calling x and y index of that specific grid where the mouse is on top i want to call that one plus 10 to the left, 10 to the right, 10 up top, and 10 below. So it's a section of 10 by 10. Actually, it's a section of 20 by 20. Okay, so once I do this, then I just need to put this set of code inside. Instead of just doing this dot x here, it has to be this dot x plus i, and then this dot y plus j. Right. Okay, so it's just a lot here. So I'm going to actually declare x to be this dot x plus i and then y to be this dot y plus j. And then I can just replace x in here and then how about y in here. And here will also be x times size and then y times size. Let's try this. Uh oh cannot read properties of undefined. The reason that there's an error, it's because X and Y here, this calculation has returned a value that is less than zero or a negative number, and we cannot have a negative index values, right? So what we want to do is using a function called constraint to constrain a values that is returned from the calculation. Let's X and then constrain it to be between zero and columns minus one. And let y to be equals, actually not let, just x and y, because we just declared it here to be constrained within zero and rows plus one, minus one. All right, I think this should work. Cannot read the property of this undefined. Oh, I did it incorrectly. So this constraint function takes in a total of three arguments. So the first one has to be what value that you want to constrain. So we want to constrain x and then set that to this value x. And then we want to constrain y and then set it to this value y. All right. Do you see that moving square? And once I stop moving, then it disappears. Comes back, disappears. Comes back, disappear. Ta-da! Right, and then you can also just change the margin here to be bigger or smaller. So this, this is way too large. So maybe 20. So that's the cool effect that I want to show. How about instead of moving the square, based on the mouse location, we just put it in the middle of the canvas and then we just change the margin size in and out. So first, we need to 
calculate what is the middle point of the canvas here. So first declare a variable called midpoint and midpoint is going to actually be a value that is an index value, right? An index value of the midpoint of the grid in both the x and y direction. So because it's a square, we just have to calculate it once. So what we need is first, it's going to be the size of the width, right? Divided by size. And that gives us the columns. Actually, we can just do columns. Yeah. And then we just need to divide it by two, correct? But depending on the size of our columns, right? That could come out to be a decimal value. For example, nine divided by two is 4.5. So we want an integer because we want an index value. So I'm going to also use a function called floor to round down that number to get an integer value instead of a decimal value. Okay, and then we're going to set this dot x to be equals to midpoint, same as this dot y. And then we're going to start our margin at zero. Actually, I'm going to set it at 10 for now. And then once we start moving, we can set it back to zero. All right, and then we don't need these two anymore. And then inside here, let's just try. If we just click run now, we don't see anything because that is the effect, right? When the image or the square is not moving, you cannot see anything. So now we're going to set another variable called D margin, and I'm going to set it to one. And what I want to do is outside of this nested loop, I'm going to increment the margin by the amount of the D margin. So basically we're gonna increase the margin size or like this section thing that makes the square bigger by one at a time. So let's try that. Oh, you see that? That's pretty cool. All right, so now let's create some boundaries. So basically once the square hits the boundary or the canvas, the edge of the canvas, then I want to move it in inside and then just going in and out like that. So first, how about we set the margin to zero? And then we want to create a conditional statement that said if this dot margin is greater than columns divided by two, then we need to use the word for two, right? then we want it to come back down. Or if this dot margin is less than zero, then we want it to go back up. So basically we just need to change the direction of this D margin here. We're going to multiply it by negative one. So right now, if it's one, then it becomes negative one. So it just goes down. And then if it's negative one, then it just goes back to one. So it goes back up. And then with this conditional statement, then we can just add it to this dot margin. Let's try that. All right. Try to experiment with different objects that you overlay on this grid of random black and white colors and see what kind of image and interesting effect that you can create. Give this one a try.